against them. So didst thou get thee a name as it is this day, and thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and their persecutors thou thrust it into the deeps as a stone into the mighty waters. Moreover, thou littest them in the in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them light in the way wherewith wherein they should go. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments. So, you know, that's another thing about the law. You're saying if somebody ever gave you something right, why, why would they take that away? That is utterly insane. Utterly insane. And true laws, good statutes, and commandments, and made us known unto them thy holy Sabbath. You see how he separated that too? You know what I'm saying? I gave you one more extra righteous thing. And commandment, commandments, them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses, thy servant. Okay, so we get the understanding of, you know, the reading of the law, why they was reading the law, and why it was good to read the law. So it's just the background, and now we're going to get to reading the law. We're going to start in Leviticus. We're going to touch uh, some of, some a little bit of uh, each uh, four books. Put it on y'all memory. <laughs> You know, I mean, you know, need to put it on your memory, you know. Because we're talking about the law, statutes, and commandments. Leviticus chapter 11. Start it. Let's start there. Yeah, I see. Now I heard you just sneaking through the bed. I do. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. I thought it was a rock, man. I was in your message. Yeah, I was like, okay. That's a rock. You told me, man. I'm like, he's getting at least one thing I'm going to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. All right. Leviticus. Chapter 11. The whole chapter. So I ain't gonna be doing. I'm not gonna be doing too much talking. Uh, myself is gonna be doing reading, really. And Yah spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven-footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat. Of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoof, as the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divide not the hoof. He is unclean unto you, and the coney, that's a, uh, I believe that's a third, five, 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 rock, high rocks, or rock badger. So it's a badger, excuse me, a badger. I don't think nobody even badger in here. Or maybe some of y'all from the country. So. <laughs> no, no, right. Y'all know y'all some country folk out here. You know, I'm from the country too. We ain't never heard about no badger, you know. <laughs> and the and the badger, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hook. He is unclean unto you, and the her the hair, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hook. He is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divided the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you, or uh, of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat, and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the river, of all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Not also is it unclean. These anacapes is abomination. Yeah. No, but what? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, this is put on my mind to remind me too. I just said it unclean. You know what I'm saying? It's an abomination. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, people, you know, that, that's that's on the lines of homosexuality, sleeping with your mother. You're doing abominable acts, man. 
That's an abomination. Not, that just took it to the next level. It's not just unclean. It's an abomination. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcass in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which ye shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination, the eagle and the osprey. Let's see, it is 13. 13, no, the vulture. Yeah. Some people, I, I'm sure some people in Africa eat vulture, man. That's a, so. That is a nasty. I don't, I don't think so. I'm sure, man, if they eat rectum uh, bee brainers, they eating some. Uh, some they some. do that here. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. If they eating the anus of a beaver, they'll eat a, a vulture. You know what I'm saying? They, they do that. You know, well, you know, Israelites eating their own children. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. so you know, don't put it past me, man. And they, and they, the let's see what this is. Thirteen to the buzzard and the vulture. Well, I guess that's a different type of vulture. Uh, yeah, that's that one. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't, I don't, I'm not familiar with this one vulture, but... And the, I ain't even eating one anymore. That's the one with the white ring around his neck. Okay. That's the vulture. Okay. I don't I guess there's another type. And the kite after his kind. It, every raven after his kind. And the owl. And the night hawk. And the cock cool. Cock cool. Not the cock cool. Cock cool. Cock cool. Cock cool. Not like some off Mark. <laughs> Y'all familiar with this show? And the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the corn more rent, and the great owl, and the uh, the soul swan. I mean swan. Yeah, I ain't never really looked at a swan in this case. Somebody, somebody. That's not a swan. That's a uh, yeah. And the pelican. And the gir eagle, and the stork, the stork, the stork, stork. and the huron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. Some of this stuff y'all gonna have to look up. Really. I don't know what some of this stuff is. I just stick to chicken and beef most anyway, so you know, now I really don't be uh, <laughs> chicken and beef. You know what I'm saying? That's what you call it safe. You know what I'm saying? That's what you call it safe. You know, you know what I'm saying? Safe. You know what I'm saying? You know, there's a couple of things. That's about safe, bro. You know, yeah, you know, there's a few things. And files that creep going upon all fours. So anything that go upon all fours, uh, that creep it, that, that's a creepy pattern, shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may ye eat of every flying, creeping thing that goeth upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with weather upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. So, you know, y'all want to eat some locusts? Like, hey, I ain't gonna eat anywhere nothing out of my mouth, man. We've been, we been without eating them for all these. I know, you know what I'm saying? Man, they are frowned up on you, but. Fry, I mean, I ain't gonna judge you, man. Go ahead, man. I might, I might just take a little leg, see how we take it. Ain't that bad, ain't that bad. Just try it out. I ain't try it out. Try it out. You know, hey, it's lawful. It's lawful. Barbecue grass. Hey, I'll try it, man. I tried it. Oh, you did? Yes, okay, you know, it might be, yeah. might be a little something, something. Yeah, you're going to put some salt on it, uh, <laughs> but, but all other flying, creeping things which have four legs shall be abominations unto you. So, any of y'all, you know, going through a drought and y'all got roaches in your house, can't cry them up, man. Put, that, <laughs> put them on with Put some soy sauce. <laughs> That is nasty. Ah. Hey man, when you hold the man, you do weird things, man. Oh, hey. In the project, boy, they be over there. We that bad. They, they, wanna... they be leaving to the next house, man. We leaving. We ain't got no food up in here. <laughs> Pull the wall down, the roaches go out. <laughs> I'm sure they eat roaches somewhere, man, in the world, man. But I ain't going to eat roaches. And for those, ye shall be unclean. So, you don't know what you have to eat. 
Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm fast, man. I can be up on a fast, man. Yeah, fast with bread soup, you know, bring food or something on the blanket. You know, the most I say he provide, you know That's what I'm saying? Right. You might got to wait a little bit, though, That's you know right. what I'm saying? You <laughs> might got to wait. And they come them grass hoppers. Yeah, chip, 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 Go ahead and send some oil down here in the pot, you know what I'm saying? Maybe the angel will bring some food. Whosoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the evening. So it's also parameters, and we talk about that a little bit too, about uh, being unclean to a certain point, because of uh, areas. Yeah, that that saying, well, it's a new day tomorrow. That's just like with certain um, with uncleanness, it's, it's a new day tomorrow, but until sundown, <coughs> uh, you'll be unclean in certain things. And whosoever breatheth aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. The carcass of every beast which divided the hoof and is not cloven footed nor chew it be cud or unclean unto you. Every one that touches them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goeth upon his paws, uh, dogs, lions, things like that, among all manner of beasts that go on all fours, these are unclean unto you. Whosoever touches their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. <clears throat> And it's the same thing with like funerals too, um, you know, touching touching dead things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he that breatheth the carcass, I mean, beareth the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean unto you. These are these also shall be unclean unto you among the creepy things that creep upon the earth, the weasel, 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 and the mouse and the tortoise. After his kind, and the ferret, and the chamelon. Camelon. Camelon. I don't know what that is. That's chameleon? Okay. And the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all the creep that creep. Whatsoever do it touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the evening. And upon whatsoever any of them, when they are dead, do it fall. It shall be unclean, whether it be any vessel of wood or remnant or skin or sack. Whatsoever vessel it be, wherein any work is done, it must be put into water, and it shall be unclean until the evening, so it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel whereunto any of them falleth, whatsoever is in it shall be unclean, and ye shall break it. So, uh, if some fall into some, I mean, you know, you know the laws, you know, y'all, it's, it's right there, I'm just reading it. Of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean. And all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. And everything, so make sure you put some lids on things. So you, you know what I'm saying? And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean, whether it be over or ranges. For pots, they shall be broken down, for they are unclean, and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit wherein there is plenty of water shall be clean, but that which toucheth their carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, shown, sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcasses, carcass fall upon, it shall be unclean unto you. And if any beast of which ye may eat die, he that touches the carcass therefore shall be unclean until the evening. So you can't eat anything that's uh, died of itself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if a cow, you know, you got a form and the cow died, you know, you can't do it. Uh, the Gentiles, you, you, you got a loss with it, you can give it to a Gentile. And he that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be until unclean until the evening. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening and every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an, be an abomination it shall be be not eaten 
Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four, or whatsoever hath more feet among all creepy things that creep upon the earth, them ye shall not eat, for they are an abomination. So roaches, can't eat roaches. They got more than four feet. This is letting y'all know. I don't know what a y'all future situation looking like. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's, that's the secret. I keep the laws that yeah, 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 yeah. I don't have to worry about yeah, them roaches. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. But you can't eat roaches. That's just pointing it out to you. All right. 44. For I am Yah. Uh, well, 43. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. For I am Yah, your, your Elohim. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. So this is the, these are things that the Most High is requiring to be holy. You know, the Most High is very serious about being holy. Only people going to the kingdom are going to be holy people. You know what I'm saying? This is a very serious thing. Um, for I am holy, neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am Elohim that bringeth you out bringing you up out of the land of Egypt to be your Yah. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law. So, you know, it's, this is a commandment to be holy. This is an order. He's not asking you to be holy. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So 11, 12. <laughs> well, you know, hey man, you never know, they put some weird stuff in there, vegetarian stuff too, for extra yes, protein. Chop a little roast. Them hissing roaches. <laughs> Dirty. Y'all be careful reading the ingredients. <laughs> be eating some beaver anus and stuff, man. You never know. And, uh, and, uh, chapter 12. And Yah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, sperm, and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. So, you know what I'm saying? This is the. This, this is on getting to the details of, you know, really living living the word, you know what I'm saying? And born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days. That's just a norm. That's, that's, every woman is unclean for seven days uh, because of the cycle each month. So that's ain't, that ain't an uh, abnormal. Uh, and we're going to read about the things you should do. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity, she shall be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of the foreskin shall be circumcised. So, you know, uh, you know, you know anybody, you having any children anytime soon, if you're male, you know, uh, on the eighth day. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hollow thing, nor come in, a hollow mean holy thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, a female child, then she shall be unclean two weeks and in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score in six days. So 66 days. Uh, because, you know, women and male uh, are different, uh, uh, you know, for, for, for obvious reasons. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled for a son, or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year. Obviously, any type of sacrifice and things. And this is another thing uh, I'll touch on just briefly. When women uh, really do need to study uh, the purifying period, uh, it, it hasn't changed. It's just the sacrifices of uh, Christ, yeah, the Mashiach. So women do need to study that uh, matter a little bit uh, uh, more, especially because you're women, uh, because it goes all the way back to Eve. Eve was, um, that burden was placed on Eve. And it's a time to reminisce of what, how we got into this part. And women do need to reminisce on that each time they get their cycle, at the end of their cycle, they need to go into their closet and um, and, and, and praise Yah and uh, deal with that. 
The first year, a burnt offering and a young pigeon on a turtle dove for a sin offering. Just like anything else, you know, if you commit adultery, what you do? You go uh, repent, put the blood of Christ on it, and you go steal something, same thing. It, it, the manners have never changed. It's just been replaced with the blood of Yahushua. Door to the tabernacle of the congregation and to the priest, who shall offer it before Yah, and make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law of her that hath born a male or a female. And if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons to uh, uh, the, the one for a burnt offering and the one for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed. Now, so you don't got to go to the temple no more because of, and, but this is, uh, I might discuss this a little bit, a little bit more, but this is the importance of why a, a woman needs a man, uh, a husband, uh, in, in her life because uh, there are no, he's the priest of his house. She's not a priestess, he's the priest over her. And when they work together, Christ is hearing the priest of that house. So this is very important. This is why women, this whole I can do it by myself, you're a lion. When you yeah. meet Christ, He's going to be looking for your priest. Uh, 13. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later, about going go into a little bit more detail. And uh, uh, Elohim spake unto Moses, and, and said unto Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in his skin of his flesh a, rise, a rising scab, or, brink, uh, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron, the priest. And what happens like that? This something like this happens now where you go, you go to the doctor. Or something that you're familiar with. You know what I'm saying? You already know what's going on. Or unto one of his sons, the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in the sight is deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh and in the sight be not deeper than the skin and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up that hath the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him uh, the seventh day and behold, if the plague in the sight be at Stay and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more, and the priest shall look on him again the seventh day. And behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. Just like uh, the doctors, when you go to the doctor, um, uh, the doctor said, okay, we're going to monitor this. We're going to see if it gets bigger or if it's going to uh, regress or stop growing. It's the same thing. But if the scab spread much abroad the, in the skin, after that he hath been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that, that behold, the scab spread in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. And people still have leprosy to this day. Uh, it's never stopped. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him. And behold, if the rising, rising be white in the skin, and it have turned in the hair white, uh, like blonde, uh, like blonde. Um, and this is another reason why you know um, the Hebrew Israelites uh, were pigmented people because when a person has leprosy, they lose their color. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, uh, they, the people who claim to be Israelites right now, they, they lack any form of melanin. You know, they're not, you know, you gotta have, you know, the Hebrew Israelites have melanin. Um, when the, uh, and that's why when, uh, when Miriam got cursed, when the Most High cursed her, he took away her color. Right. You know, he took away her, her, her melanin. You know, she was, she was white. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she was void of melanin. She was void of melanin at that point. So you could imagine, you know, how I'm, 
But uh, when the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the raising, uh, verse, uh, raising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, blonde, and there be quick raw flesh in the right raising, it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh. And this is another thing, go back to that lesson I was doing about uh, leprosy. This is why Satan loved to put that leopard print on you to, to keep you that that uh, defiled uh, uh, covering. You know, leopard, leopard leprosy is not a good thing. And the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and he shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leopard break out a board in the skin, and the leopard cover all skin of him that hath the plague, from his head even to his feet, to his foot, What's, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and behold, if a leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white, he is clean. So you completely um, have uh, been stripped of your melanin at this point. But uh, cleanness has, has come in. But when raw flesh appeared, appeared in him, he shall be unclean, and the priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean, for the raw flesh is unclean, it is leprosy. Or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest, and... You sound like a lot of doctor's appointments here. <laughs> There's a lot of doctor's appointments right here. Got me? You know what I'm saying? And the priest shall see him. And behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. He is clean. The flesh also, in which even the skin thereof was a bowl, and is healed. And in the place of the bowl, there is a white rat rising, or a bright spot, what white and somewhat reddish, and it be shown to the priest. And if when the priest see it, it behold, it be in the sight, the sight lower than the skin, and the and hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy broken out of the bowl. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hairs therein, and if it be not lower than the skin, but some, be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if the, and if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But if the if the bright spot stay in the place and spread not, it is a burning bowl. And the priest shall pronounce him clean. I got the burning bro bowls. Oh, thank you, yeah. Oh, I thought I had something else, boy. I thought I had something else. Oh, boy. Like, you know, you go to the SD clinic, boy. I just got committed and no AIDS. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I get rid of this, boy. Boy, I ain't never had committed or anything like this. So, man, I'm just, I'm just reenacting things. <laughs> Thank God for that, man. <laughs> Thank God for that. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof there is a hot burning and a quick flesh that burning have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or what, or white, then the priest shall look upon it and behold, if the hair in the bright spot be turned white. And it be in the sight deeper than the skin, it is leprosy broken out of the burning. Wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean, it is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there is no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days, and the priest shall look upon him the seventh day, and if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in the place and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark. This is what man. You see, man, this leprosy stuff ain't no joke, man. This is some deep. This whole thing is about leprosy. Yeah. So be careful with that leprosy stuff, man. You know, Satan's crafty. 
But if somewhat dark, it is rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation burnt of, of the burning. If a man or a woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in the sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry scale, even leprosy upon the head of or beard. And another thing, what we see, what Satan is doing right now, Satan wants everybody to have le uh, yellow hair. You look up, people blind in their hair, blind in their hair, left and right. Women wearing blind wigs. Why? Because Satan reads the Bible. Satan wants you to look twin. I've seen, I mean, all type of Israelite women with this stuff in their hair, man. Like, you have no idea what you're doing to yourself. You have no idea. You're just tell you're just screaming, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. Satan read the Bible. Satan will get you to do everything that is unlawful. Satan will make it turn into something good. Or or or, or, or likable. And if the priest look on the plague <coughs> scale, and behold, it be in the sight deeper than the skin, and that are in no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut up him that hath the plague of the scale seven days, and in the seventh day the priest shall look upon the plague, and behold, if the scale spread not, and there be in it no yellow hair, and the scale be in the sight deeper than the skin, he shall be shaven, but the scale shall be not shaved, and the priest shall shut him up that hath the uh, scale seven days more, I think you about, 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 about 30, about 34 days now, too. <laughs> he, he deep in it now, man. Boy, good. Boy, everything going good down there, dear? Yeah, it's another seven days. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, so seven days out there. Boy, boy, boy. You know, I that hope it ain't special, done. I hope it ain't. special camp for them, man. I know. It is outside the gates. I hope it ain't done. And they'll quarantine you now. That ain't nothing changed. Being unclean in America, they will quarantine you. It's right. certain something that are so grievous, they'll mandatory, they'll put you in a quarantine jail. Well, I know, um, not tuberculosis. Yeah, not tuberculosis. it is. They had an outbreak a few years ago. They quarantined no, somebody. No, I'm talking about, I think that's what they call it. Tuberculosis. Yeah, TB. TB, yeah. yeah. They got camps. They send people up there mm -hmm. with them camps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a camp where they have them fun. Mm -hmm. But they just send them up there. And that's what y'all are sick. Mm -hmm. To quarantine them. Yeah, well, the, as a quarantine. Mm -hmm. And just like it's here, the most high, like when most high say something unclean, they know it's unclean. They just, you know what I'm saying, just let it go. But certain things that are so unclean that, you know, they got a quarantine. You know what I'm saying? And in the seventh day, 34 and in the seventh day, the priest shall look on the scale, and behold, if the scale be not spread in the skin, nor in the sight deeper than the skin, then, yeah, I remember I was somewhere, man, uh, and they were doing a TV test for this job, and uh, one of the uh, therapists, they came over here to check a little thing, you know, because it's supposed to be a bump if you got tuberculosis. So the nurse is going around checking. Okay, okay. She went to the uh, therapist. <laughs> she said, I was like, I said, she got the TV. <laughs> she got the TV. That nurse looked at her because she was just doing it. Okay, okay, okay. She went to her. <laughs> she was. <laughs> She's like, I got to talk to you in private. <laughs> yeah, that's my stuff. You sick? Yeah, you got the TV. You sick, boy? But being unclean is not nothing to play with. This is my point. You know what I'm saying? Not nothing to play with. Uh, 30, uh, 35. But if the scale spread much in the skin after he his cleansing, then the priest shall look on him, and behold, if the scale be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek for yellow hair. He is unclean. But if the scale be in his sight at, at a state, and there be and there is a black hair grown upon in the scale is healed. He is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. If a man also or a woman have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, then the 
priest shall look, and behold, if the bright spots in the skin of the flesh be darkened, white, darkish white, it is a freckle. So they got freckles in the I think you got the I think you got the leprosy beauty. <laughs> the doctors the priest said it's the freckles. <laughs> I know you yeah, have. I think I got freckles too. But uh, <laughs> freckles. Yeah, no, they claim with freckles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just freckles. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It was just freckles, dude. Yeah, he's all right. Spot that groweth in the skin, he is clean. And the man whose hair is falling off his head, he is bald. Yet he is clean. So you know what I'm saying? Anybody got a few bald heads in here? You know what I'm saying? Don't worry, guys. You're okay. <laughs> like Elijah, like brother, uh, yeah, Elijah, yeah, call him bald head. Yeah. And so, so people been going bald for a long time, man. And he that have his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, he, he is forehead bald. Damn. <laughs> I ain't never read that one, bro. See, this is a good thing about reading the law, man. I ain't never read that one, man. Forehead balls. You see the hairline right there. Oh, that, that's the you that's the right there? Okay, okay. I, oh, brother, can you forehead ball, brother? Yeah, brother. Now you know where to look that up, brother. Uh, 13, Leviticus 13. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, white or wet, uh, and if man be, uh, all right, where was I? Uh, for he is he is for him, yet he is clean. And if there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish sword, it is leprosy sprung up in his bald head or bald forehead. Then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the raising of the sword be white reddish in the bald head or his bald head uh, forehead, <laughs> bald head forehead, but well, that's as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh, he is leprous. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bar. And he shall put a covering upon, upon his upper lip. And shall cry, unclean, unclean. Ooh, man, that's what they have to do. Because, you know, you don't want to get everybody else sick, you know. You know? They even do that stuff today. Uh, that's why they put on masks when they go out to the store, you know what I'm saying? Cover they, uh, whatever they got. Yeah, that one is bad air pollution, too. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm talking about uh, when it's not. And uh, all the days we're in, the plague shall be in him. He shall be the foul. He is unclean. You see, man, when Yahushua HaMashiach came in, he had all this is why he was so busy, man, just cleaning the leper, the lame, the this, this, this. And they still here to the day. You know, the leper, the lame, still here to this day. All the days we're in, the plague shall be in him. He shall be the foul. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. Without the camp shall his inhabitation be. And you know when you get you know go to one of them camps, those uh, 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 tuberculosis camps. I mean, you alone by yourself, man. Ain't no, ain't no. <laughs> you no, ain't no. getting out of there. Ain't, ain't no. nobody about to come touch you. Ain't nobody. <laughs> they gonna be coming like Darth Vader. <laughs> we have your twelve o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody about to be hugging you out here. You know you unclean, yo. Uh, being unclean ain't nothing to play with, man. Okay, uh, the garment also, but also, man, this is brought upon sin, though. You know, this is brought upon sin. Still to this day, man, people got generation family curses because of sin, you know. Uh, the garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, wherein it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be the wrap of woof of linen or the woolen wet, uh, weather, in skin, or in anything made of skin, um, that's an uh, animal skin, and if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment, that's nasty stuff, in the skin, either in the wrap or in the
just like uh, when you get wrapped, you know, you got a sore, open sore, and they take bandages off, you know, they got different colors in there. Yeah. The, the Levites was some free, I mean, some doctors, man. These some, you know, some serious stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they, 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 they were the doctors, you know what I'm saying? They, they seen some stuff, boy. I see what you done got yourself into. A little bit of fornication now. <laughs> Look. <laughs> They, we're going to talk about leaking too. They got some leaking up uh, first. Here you go. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm leaking, man. Uh, and, and, okay, well, man, plague, leprosy, and shall be shown unto the priest. And the priest shall look upon the plague and shut up it that he hath the plague seven days. And he shall look upon the plague of the seventh day. If the plague be spread in the garment, either in the wrap or the wolf, or in the skin, or in any work that is made of skin, the plague is a pittering leprosy. Pittering leprosy. What is, what is that? Fifty-one. Active. Active. Mm. That's, that's got bad news for you. It is unclean. He shall therefore burn that garment, whether wrap or wolf, in woolen or in linen, or in anything of skin, wherein the plague is, for it is venturing leprosy. It is active leprosy. It shall be burnt in the fire. And you know, still to this day, man, as soon as they the doctor comes see, they put one of the little things in red boxes. You know what I'm saying? This whole thing about being unclean, it ain't nothing that will change. Uh, and if the priest shall look and behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the wrap or in the wolf or in any thing of the skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is, and he shall shut up it up seven days more, and the priest shall look on the plague after that it is washed, and behold, if the plague have not changed its color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire, it is fruit inward, whether it be bore within or without. And if the priest look and behold the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of, of it, then he shall rent it out of the garment or out of the skin or out of the wrap or out of the wolf. And it, if it appears still in the garment, either in the wrap or in the wolf or in anything of the skin, it is spreading plague. It is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn the, that wherein that the plague is with fire, and the garment, either wrap or wolf or whatsoever thing skin it be, when thou shalt wash, if the plague be depart from them, then it shall be washed the second time, and shall be clean. Then uh, this is the law of the plague of leprosy, in, in a garment of wool or linen, either in the wrap or wolf or anything, of the skin to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Wow. All right, four, uh, 15. Uh, 14. 15, 15. Skipping over 14. Because that's about leprosy too. Leper. 15. Chapter 15. And Yah spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when any man hath a running issue out of his flesh because of his of his issue, he is unclean. Now this is talking about sores right here. You got uh, you know you burn yourself and start leaking, or you got some type of sore, some bitch you like a spider, you start leaking. Uh, but it's gonna start talking about sexual stuff in a little bit too. Running issue out of his flesh because of his issue, he is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue it is un it is his uncleanness every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue <laughs> so if anybody come to your house with the issue you know what I'm saying bring out the spare bunk you know what I'm saying got you right here you know what I'm saying sleep on the floor <laughs> okay or, or brother Ishmael uh, put you on the floor they, they need a, sleep on they, the floor they need a bunk because 
Yeah, good Clorox will take care of that. <laughs> yeah, man, get it how you get it, man. Get it how you get it. And this this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue. It is his uncleanness. Every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue is unclean. And everything whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until evening. And he that sitteth on anything whereon he hath he sat that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And he that touches the flesh of him that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And if he that hath the issue spit upon him that is clean, then he shall wash his so be careful we talk to, you know what I'm saying? You talk to people be spitting out their mouth. Yeah, man, <laughs> they, 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 they owe me some money. Oh, man! 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 I was just gonna go out tonight. <laughs> so, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, put spit upon him that is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in the water and be unclean until the evening. And what saddle soever he rideth upon that hath the issue shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth anything that was under him shall be unclean until evening. And he that beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself with water and be unclean until the evening. And whosoever he toucheth that hath the issue, he uh, issue and hath not raped a uh, rinse his hands in water, and shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until evening. And the vessel of earth that he touches, which hath the issue, shall be broken. And every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And when he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in the running water, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves, uh, this would be something, you know, uh, oh, Yahushua Mashiach, and the, and this is the details about, you know, being unclean, you know what I'm saying, because uh, there were still unclean people when Yahushua uh, was here, and when he left, there were still unclean people here, so unclean people never stopped, it was still here. And uh, 15, and the priest shall offer them uh, the one for sin offering and offering to Yahushua. And if any sixteen and if any man's and if any man's seed of compilation go out from him to play t uh, plus attention to his fellows. Uh, most of you and most of y'all ain't got no women, so you know you ain't nothing to worry about. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but when you do, maybe get one. <laughs> Keep this in mind. <laughs> and if any man's seed of compilation go out from him then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation, his sperm, shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. And if a woman have an issue, uh, so so you know after you you know engage in marital sex, y'all can sit there and hug for a second. Get the shower, guys. Get the shower. Uh, and this is the woman dealing with uh, issue of blood. And if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put she shall be put apart seven days. And whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. And, uh, and if you study Hebrew culture, Hebrew men and Hebrew women can sleep in the same bed. This isn't, uh, this isn't uh, I, I know in, uh, in this land at this time, they both sleep in the same bed. But in Hebrew culture, when you study, they sleep in separate quarters. You know? And one reason was because one was unclean for a certain period of time. Um, and verse uh, 20. And everything that she lieth upon, 
Oh, yeah, I'm French verse 19. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue is in her flesh, be blood, she shall be put of court seven days. And whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever touches her bed shall be washed in his clothes and bathe himself in water. And, it's talking about the woman's cycle, the monthly cycle. And be unclean until the evening. And whatsoever touches anything that she set upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And if it be on her bed or on anything whereon she sitteth, uh, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until the evening. And... Either, and if any man lie with her at all, and her flower be upon him, so uh, you're not even supposed to be doing this when uh, they're, they're engaging in sexual activity as she's on her uh, cycle, he shall be unclean seven days, and all the bed whereon he lieth shall be unclean. And if a woman hath an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issues of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. And that's why when Christ came, uh, that woman who had the issue of blood, this was her. She just kept running. It wouldn't stop. Yeah. And he had to heal her from that. So she was unclean. That her whole life from that point started, she was unclean. You know what I'm saying? So for like 14 years, I think. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, a long time. And, and they were mad at Yahushua for healing her. You know, what you doing, man? This is Shabbat, man. <laughs> they were, and they had no power to heal her either. So they was just, I don't even know why. They just some evil people. They was evil right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, Every bed wherein she lieth, all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever she sitteth upon, that shall be unclean as a cleanness of separation and whosoever touches those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in the water and be unclean until the evening. You know, and this is another thing about, you know, about women pastors. I mean, seven days out of the month you're unclean. You have no business even preaching to the congregation. You're literally unclean for seven days. You know what I'm saying? And that don't change because Yahweh Shamashiach came. You still got the issue of blood. It's still coming out. The woman with the issue of blood, she he didn't touch her, she touched her. Damn, and he said, I felt, I felt, yeah, uh, what he said, virtue. I feel, hey, yeah, first, I felt virtue come out of me. Like, just, just let me touch him, just let me touch him. You know what I'm saying? And once she touched the him was gone, mm -hmm. she, she was clean. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, but, but she still had her cycle, it just, it just right. went to normal. But if, if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days after that she shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take unto her turtle, uh, two turtle, two turtles or t young pigeons and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And you know, from my understanding, women it still haven't stopped the women. You still have to, it's no different from uh, if you steal something or you uh, uh, commit a sin, you still going to cry to the Most High and repenting for that. And women, because of the matter that happened to Eve, it's a it's a monthly reminder to stay in order. It's a monthly reminder. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering. So I'll skip that because that all that all that goes to Yahushua Mashiach now. Uh, Thirty one. Thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness. If you stay in uncleanness, you will die in your sin. When they defile my tabernacle that is among them, this is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him who see. I mean, how many pastors, you know what I'm saying, then committed fornication right before they went on the pool pit? You know what I'm saying? Uh, Pan's shirt still messed up, you know what I'm saying? God gave me a message. <laughs> you unclean, that's what he got. I hope, I hope that's the message. <laughs> unclean, unclean. Unclean, unclean. I hope that's the message you about to preach, Pastor. <laughs> and and uh, 32. This is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him whose seed goeth forth 
from him and is defiled therewith and of her that is sick of her flower, her cycle, and of him that hath an issue of the man and of the woman and of him that lieth with her that is unclean. And you know, you're not supposed to. That's not supposed to do that. But, uh, she's unclean for seven days. But some people can't control themselves. <laughs> so, but you're not supposed to do that though. But, you know, 17. 17, chapter 17. Uh, maybe do uh, one or two more chapters. We'll maybe continue this uh, next week. Uh, we're going 17. 17, chapter 17, 10 to 16. 10 to 16. Chapter 17, 10 to 16. And whoso, and whatsoever man, I know they had a pot of water for us to ride, man. What he was doing that, man, for all the miles, man. Touch me up a little bit, man. Touch me up a little bit. Uh, uh, 10 to 16. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or the strangers that should join among you that eateth any manner of blood. And a lot of people, you know, they eat the bloody steak. Oh, medium rare. Medium rare. <laughs> you know what medium rare is? Uh, they take a... They just take a... Just cut it off and just put it on Yeah. The now, they, yeah. They, they, they have a little decency here. They take an uncooked steak, throw it in there. One, two, three. Up. Oh. Don't want to overcook it. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. I, 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 I. I had a sister, a sister that was like that. That thing dripping with blood, man. That's some fun. Can't be no blood in your meat, man. Can't be no blood in your meat. Uh, I wouldn't. This go for us. Uh, stra- this is Hebrew Israelites and strangers. Both. No eating of blood. Because uh, people say that because of the law done away, we eat blood. They, uh, they have one thing, uh, what's it called? It's called, uh, blood. No, nah, not that, uh, it's called blood pudding. Yeah, that's what it's called. Blood, it's, 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 it's popular in Europe. But they, they, steak cacao. Yeah, that's, but that, that's, just, that's just raw meat. But blood, but blood uh, pudding is much worse to my, to my, uh, they, 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 they take, they take blood, uh, they, they like to use pig blood, too. Yeah. They stuff it with rice and they put it in the intestines of a pig and they bake it. Oh yeah, man. And then they cut well, it the open. You see that, man? <laughs> I tried it when I was younger. And then I they, tried eat, it. they eat the blood. So I found out what it was. <laughs> yeah, that pudding sure was tasty. It was like butter. Huh? I forgot. <laughs> like butter. I forgot what it's called in Spanish. Uh, so no eating of blood. Just go for Hebrew life and Gentiles. Anybody want to believe in the Bible? And through Christ, through Yah- and Yahushua Mashiach, uh, that eateth any manner of blood, 